Welcome! This video is part of the Service Desk Configuration Series, basically showing you how to set up your Service Desk module in your PSA. This video is uh, dedicated to show you how to set up pre-configure values so then we can then turn around and use the Service Desk module, opening tickets and managing the entire support process. I've logged into my PSA. I'm going to take my mouse up top and click on the Admin module. Then I'm going to slide over to the left, go down and click on the Service Desk folder. Issue Types. We're going to walk down these subfolders. Issue Types. When you open a ticket, you capture your clients, who the contact is, and then why they're calling. These pre-configured issues and sub-issues make it fast and easy to capture what's going on and then later on report on it. So you can see I'm going to click on Printer. Printer is the issue. And then what exactly is going wrong with the printer? You'll see I have a series of sub-issues so I can really drill down into what's going on. So. You're going to want to put your issues and your sub-issues into the system. Ticket types. Next subfolder over here on the left. We ship it with incident, problem, change, and service request. These are based on ITIL standards. I went in and added monitoring alert. When you uh, integrate your PSA with your remote monitoring and management solution, it's just one other way for you and your team to differentiate, to understand what type of tickets you're working on in the system. Queues. A queue is a folder. It's a way to organize tickets that have a common theme, maybe by source, maybe by product line, maybe by team. I see people all the time put in triage uh, or level one. All the tickets come there and then they're distributed to the right employee based on skill sets and need and priority. Uh, maybe create a queue called monitoring alerts. So that way, uh, when those tickets come in from your RMM, create tickets in your PSA, you have one collective folder. And then when you create queues, don't forget to add your employees. I can select one or two or all. What employees will have access to that queue? will be able to go in there and grab tickets and work them. Okay, so queues, an effective way of managing tickets. On your left, I move down to the next folder, priorities. We ship it with uh, low, very low, very high, medium. I started changing them in the system and so can you. You can delete, add, or rename. So I'm going to take very high and open it, and I'm going to call it critical. Whoops, uh, it'd help if I type. There we go. And it's the highest priority, and then I hit save. Done. Click on my breadcrumb, and then I can see. So, you know, I recommend keep it to a reasonable number of priorities in your system. Um, ticket status. We ship it with these six. Uh, a ticket's brand new. Eventually it's completed. You can use these other ones. So when uh, you're logging in the system, you can check and see if a caller calls in where their ticket's at. Oh, it's in progress. Let me see how we're doing. Let me see if we're almost done. I'll recommend a status like waiting for vendor. Great way, again, to track your tickets in the system. If anyone ever calls in, you'll understand where it's at. Is it in progress? Is it completed? Am I waiting for something? Uh, I need to get some information before I close the ticket. Uh, one other one I recommend is client responded. With the workflow rules, which is covered in another video and business process, if a customer replies to a ticket, uh, replies to an email that was generated out of your PSA, that reply can come back in, add a note, and actually change the status to customer responded and send your team letting them know. Great way to manage the ticket process. I'm going to go down to the next folder called Email Parser. Um, when you receive your database, your PSA, it will be blank. I went and hit New and created an example. Your mailbox name will be whatever you want to call it, your support, your help desk. Your email and username will be the same. And then the password. Basically what you're doing is you're giving your PSA uh, the rights to look in the inbox, extract the data, 
mark the email as read and create a ticket in your PSA. And then, you know, once it's created, it'll go to a queue or a person and notify you. Just giving your customers another avenue to reach out for help, making it easier for you to organize that entire process. So you'll put your, and then again, it's a dedicated inbox, not an alias. So they'll send it in and it'll uh, sign the priority, put it to a queue, track it, and it'll help you manage that process. Um, in the other video we talked about in the CRM, um, in the CRM, if you have the account contact, if they send it in, it creates a ticket. If the account contact is not in there, it goes to a folder in the service desk called unknown. But there's a workaround or there's a solution. Uh, in the CRM on an account, you could put an email domain in there. So that's you know making it easier for anyone to send in a ticket from your customer base and create tickets. Okay, um, I skipped over SLA. An SLA means service level agreement. It's designed to help you internally track and uh, help guide you, making sure that you are you know, responding in a reasonable amount of time. So you would click new and then uh, create the SLA. So mine's a standard. So what I'm saying is uh, if my customers call in during the business hours and it's a printer issue, I need to respond or start working on the ticket in an hour and resolve by eight. So you can create one SLA, go to your My Company, Company Settings, and Service Desk, and set a standard. If you wanna create more, you would create uh, like premium SLA back in there, and then to uh, add it to a specific customer, you would need to keep, create a contract in the Finance Module. But we've got a default SLA now. So how does it work? I create a ticket, I start typing TD Bank. I fill in the caller. I fill in the rest of the ticket fields that are required. Uh, remember the incident, uh, the issue. Oh, it was a printer. And the sub issue, we'll just say it was printer. Uh, my title, printer, not working. Details. Priority. I'm going to hit it, uh, hit save without filling a required field so you can see what it looks like. Boom. It tells you that you need to either assign it to a queue or a person. Okay, thank you for the gentle reminder, Mr. PSA, Miss PSA. I'm going to go here and pick and then hit save. My ticket's created. And oh, I have an SLA. It tells me I need to resolve it by a certain time, by tomorrow. And you also have a nice SLA link and it shows you you need to respond by and resolve by. It's a great way to help you and your team stay on top of and respond to uh, tickets, uh, you know, uh, based on, you know, kind of set responses. It can be based on issues, sub issues. It can be based on priority. Okay. So, and then you can report on that and emails can be sent if you're missing SLAs. That's more advanced setup. But uh, so the main focus again was really in this video, come in here, uh, set up your issues and sub issues, ticket types, queues, priorities. Uh, once these are set up, then you'll be able to go in and start managing and tracking all your support tickets through the service desk.